everybody. It's High Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, the time of recording this video, it's the start of June. So, hurricane season is officially underway. And, well, we also have the whole month of weather to keep an eye on here. And a lot of changes are coming. So, we're going to make this one an all-comprehensive video, maybe a little bit longer. Hopefully, you guys receive this just as well as the last June Outlook, which I'm really appreciative of, by the way. We're almost up to 900 subs from that. Thank you a bunch, by the way. Hopefully, we can continue the trend as we continue to go forward here. But that being said, enough talking. Let's go ahead and get into it here. So, a few changes since the last June Outlook. I uploaded that one late because all the severe weather that's ongoing. There's still severe weather ongoing. I might be streaming this weekend. I may not. It depends on how things pan out. But interesting thing to make note of is the monthly temperature outlook in particular has changed. Whereas before we were kind of a bit more balanced, there's going to be a trough that ends up coming in during the early part of this month here that's going to hang around the eastern half of the U.S. And this is going to help level out the temperatures here. So instead of before where we were seeing above average chances for temperatures, now we've kind of switched to where we could see equal or even chances of slightly below average temperatures. Also, ridge is going to be occurring out towards the west, and this is going to help keep the temperatures warmer here. Over towards the northeast, it could be a mixed bag. You're kind of leaning a little bit more towards above average temperatures, but of course, there's still a lot of unknowns with this trough once it moves in, and that's going to be coming very soon here. So another thing we're going to take a look at is the precipitation here. Over the monthly... Over the course of the monthly outlook, we're still kind of looking towards the south, especially towards the southern plains for some action here. But the area of focus has kind of shifted with a higher point of confidence towards the northern end of the Mississippi Delta. So could be seeing increasing chances of rainfall there. And then over towards the northwest, eventually, we're going to start to see a shift where we're seeing increasing amounts of rainfall. Whereas before, we were actually looking at below average chances of rainfall here as well so like i said a lot of changes have occurred within the last week since i put up the video well it hasn't even really been a week yet it's really been four days but in any case here definitely seeing a lot of uh, changes that have occurred pretty rapidly in the last little bit also looking over towards alaska and this helps improve the confidence in the area of increased rainfall over towards the northwest is towards Eastern Alaska, whenever you see those above average chances, that usually shows a little bit more of an active pattern out towards the west, or at least towards the northwest. Do also think Canada could get into the action a bit here. We may be doing some Canada streams in the next little bit. We'll see how things pan out. So a quick overview of what, of what we could be dealing with over the course of the month. This is going by a week to week basis. We'll actually, at the end of the video, end up doing a day to day look at what our height anomalies, our troughs, our warm and cold air masses are looking like. But over the course of the week ahead here, do see the signs of the ridge beginning to take shape here. Here's a warm mass, warm air mass over here in the red. I did not say the A word. And as time goes on, interesting thing to make note of, there's our trough. This is what's going to help keep the east cool over the course of the middle of the month here. And this is going to linger for a bit. Eventually, as we get towards the back half of the month, we shift once again. Now we're dealing with those warmer than average prop temperatures and warmer air masses over towards the east. And towards the west, we're kind of more of in a neutral look here. And this is really how we end out the entire month of June from that point onward. Eventually, even as we go into July here... This is a little sneak peek. We see a new ridge that's building out towards the southwest. A little bit more typical of the pattern that we would see during the summertime. So we're going, th we're going to see a few changes as we continue to go forward here. So brace yourselves for a little bit of wacky weather in the days and weeks ahead here. So what is this going to look like in temperature? If you're wondering, here it is. So this first week, of course, we're going to be warm out towards the west, and then the big change happens towards the middle of the month where we see those below average temperatures out towards the east. The coolest temperatures seem to be mainly based over the far reaches of the northeast and into the Ohio Valley here. We have probabilities of maybe seeing about maybe 10 to maybe even 20, 25 degrees below average here 
where of course out west it's kind of the inverse of that where you could see maybe 20 to 30 degrees above average let's so continue to go forward here we start to level back out do see some pockets of below average temperatures out towards the northern plains here and back towards the northwest as the pattern levels off but eventually that warm air starts to settle back in for the country as a whole here as we get towards the end of june then we start to see that ridging begin to build in as we head towards july so could be a warm uh holiday weekend around july 4th here that being said let's go ahead and take a look at what our precip could look like now one thing with these troughs over here these troughs usually end up bringing more unsettled weather so as we go to the next frame here as we're already seeing activity over here towards the mississippi delta and the ozarks it's actually looking a little bit more like the opposite here I think that because we're looking at the 15th, we're going to be more so towards the tail end of this trough. I do think that we aren't seeing the full story here, hence why I'm going to show at the end of the video what our day-to-day -day weather will look like from this point here. We're finally within range to do that, which is why I didn't show it in the first outlook. Sometimes it gets a little bit complicated when it comes to weather, using the weather models here, but in any case, as we go towards the middle and back half of the month here, we start to see an increased amount of activity out towards the northern plains. Not surprising for this time of year. That's usually what we would expect here. Eventually, Florida does get in the action on the moisture as well. Florida's been very dry lately, so there are some drought concerns that are brewing here. I don't think that this will last for too much longer, though. And once we get into the middle part of June, we get into a little bit more of a pattern that's favorable for that region. And then also there's the wild card of the tropics now coming into play. Eventually, as we even head into the first part of July here, we see a lot more action towards the Gulf Coast states and the southeast as a whole. So speaking of hurricanes, as we mentioned before at the beginning of the video, June 1st, hurricane season starts today. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a look at the wind shear. Now, contrary to tornadoes where you're kind of looking for wind shear, especially at the lower levels of the atmosphere, you actually want the opposite with hurricanes. With hurricanes, you want light wind shear. And right now, to start off the first day of hurricane season, all these areas in the red here, that's a lot of wind shear. You want the opposite of that. So I would not expect anything to be forming in the short term so basically within the next week we're good so basically what we're looking at right now is the gulf of mexico and close to home basically for the most favorable areas of development right now as far as these regions are concerned the waters are still very warm for this time of year but this wind shear is going to help nullify any chance of anything developing within the short term Basically, what we would really be concerned about right now if the wind shear was lighter would be a storm system that has a front that dips into the Gulf here and kind of stirs it up a little bit. And we just don't really see that right now. There's too much uh, speed shear for sure. Directional shear doesn't matter quite as much with hurricanes. It does matter to a point here. But if you have speed shear like this, odds are you're going to have a tough time getting anything to form. Now, there is something I do want to bring up as we move further along here. As our pattern starts to shift here, we do end up seeing a point where this wind shear does start to lighten up a little bit. Now, will, will it lighten up enough to where something can develop? It's still questionable at this time, but this is when we get towards the mid-month, and this is what kind of makes me raise a brow just a little bit. We're getting into the yellows and the lighter orange here. This is where that wind shear starts to lighten up. And if we get a frontal boundary that pops up here, or even a low pressure that sneaks into the Gulf, we could get a name storm that pops out of that. On average, we get a name storm in June once every two years. This could be the time frame as we get towards the back half of the month where that could occur. Of course, we're so far out looking at this point in time that I wouldn't put too much merit into it. But in any case, just something to keep an eye out on. There's another way we can look at um, the potential for something developing here, as well as where our low pressures are going to be across the country as a whole here. And that's looking at what's called the ensemble member. If you see a grouping of numbers with the brighter colors together in the red, that's an area of low pressure. And if it's over the water, I mean, you can kind of put two and two together. 
becomes a point of interest for maybe some tropical development down the line. And as, and as I said before, you aren't really seeing a whole lot. <clears throat> you see a little bit of a change in color, but nothing incredible. In fact, you see a lot of high pressure going on over here towards the Gulf. So that also kind of works in our favor for keeping uh, any sort of tropical activity at bay in the short term here. Eventually, though, we do see increased activity, of course, over towards the Caribbean as time goes on. Mainly think this will be in the mode of showers and storms. Nothing in particular that's organized in the way of tropical development. Now, as we get towards the middle of the month, that's where things kind of get a little bit more interesting. I do see a little member that's popping up here that we need to keep an eye on, maybe. It could I do think that this just increases the shower and storm probabilities over towards Florida, but nothing in the way of tropical development just yet. Over towards the Eastern Pacific, hurricane season's already been underway. That season starts May 15th. So maybe towards Western Mexico might be something to keep an eye on. But as far as the Atlantic is concerned right now, we're in a pattern that kind of works against tropical development. Not atypical for this time of year, but if there's anywhere that I would watch right now, it would mainly be towards the Caribbean. Everywhere else, towards the main development region, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that going. That being said, last thing we're going to do is look at some model data here from the CFS. This is where we're going to look at the day-to-day, -day look at this from more of a day-to-day uh, -day standpoint here. So, quick look right now. This is what our current setup is looking like weather-wise do have a trough that's popped up over here. I think it's more predominant in Canada right now. But as a whole here for the lower 48, not the most favorable setup for severe weather, but it's also not a 0% chance for severe weather. So as this continues to move forward here, do get these little small little dips within the trough here. Wouldn't expect anything magnanimous to come out of that. It's really not until we get towards the fifth where we see our next big feature come in. And this is why what I was talking about before. This trough really gets going by the time we get towards the 6th and into the 7th and beyond. Depending on where this cutoff low goes, determines where some of the most active weather will be. Like I said, it's kind of favoring more of the northeast right now. I do think there are chances for shower and storm activity towards the southeast. But it could kind of vary on a day-to-day -day basis for a little bit here. When you're on this side of the trough, you're looking at sinking air. You don't really want sinking air when it comes to thunderstorms. It's kind of the opposite. You want that, want that positive vorticity over here on the right side. As time goes on, though, we, we do continue to see this trough affect the eastern half of the country. This is definitely going to keep the temperatures down, which is nice for me considering the fact that I'm a landscaper, by the way. That's my regular job. And then as time goes on, another trough comes in, kicks this out, and I think this is what's going to help spice up the severe weather threat towards the eastern half of the country as we continue to go forward here. Also, this is going to help keep the temperatures cool as we go forward beyond that point. And this takes a while to leave. So by the time we get towards, let's say, the 20th, this trough finally deteriorates. We do have maybe a couple other chances of showers and storms, possibly in the 22nd onward. Now, keep in mind, we are well beyond no man's land here, so this can easily change. But based off of the looks that I'm seeing here, we could have a good bit of activity towards the eastern half of the US, which is somewhat atypical for this time of year. So eyes open on that. Eventually we get our ridge that develops out towards the west here, and eventually a temperature shift towards the northwest as well. We're gonna keep an eye on after that point. We eventually start to get the appearance of what might even be an omega block as we get towards the 24th and the 25th. So it'll be interesting to see if this pans out, how our severe weather outlooks will change from that point. I do think this will help slow things down a little bit more. We definitely could use a break. <laughs> but as time goes on here, big ridge develops out west for a little while until the end of the month. And then after that point, we're really kind of looking more so towards the start of July from that point. Does so far look like it could be a more tamed weather pattern, so to speak. But like I said, 768 hours out is more than 30 days. Long way to look. And, some, and sometimes this model is not the most reliable, but the only one that I can really find that goes out to this range currently. Outside of a couple other ensembles. But in any case, though... Take a final look at our precipitation here and we'll be out. But fact in the matter is 
we have a lot of moving parts in the days ahead with the in the days and weeks ahead as far as June is concerned. So here's that activity again. That's that trough, those series of troughs coming through the east here. And this is what's really helping favor that more active pattern out east. Out towards the west, it still could be uh, busy early on. But once we get towards the back half of the month here, that's when business really starts to pick up. But of course, like I said, at this range, it's really hard to tell how much of this will verify, of course. So eyes open here. Make sure you guys are staying weather aware and being prepared. Like I said, hurricane season starts today, so we'll be doing outlooks at least once a week from this point. In any case, though, appreciate everyone tuning in. Hope you guys have a good weekend. The entire Metalhead Weatherman, I will see you in the next one.